Toledo native Rick Upchurch will be honored by the African American Legacy Project as a Sports Legend Hall of Famer in next year's class. The former Denver Bronco, who is retired and now living in Nevada, back in Toledo this week to visit friends and family. We caught up with him at the African American Legacy Project as he reflects on his football career. The Springfield Blue Devils' journey to the NFL went from Holland, Ohio to Iowa, where he was a two-time All-American at Indian Hills Community College, to the Big Ten at Minnesota, and finally to the Rocky Mountain State. But an injury nearly derailed it before it even began. What happened was I had a neck injury uh, there at Indian Hills Community College. I played the whole season with a bad neck injury. My arm atrophied to a point where they're like, man, you aren't, you aren't going to be able to play no anymore. And so at the end of the year, I had my neck looked at. I had MRIs done, and they didn't feel like it was right for me to go on and play anymore. And they looked at it again and said, well, maybe you can and, uh, you know, work on it, get your neck strong. And I did. Went to the University of Minnesota where they have an excellent um, medical facility up there, one of the top medical schools in the country. I thought that would be the right place for me to go. Uh, went there, got a scholarship and uh, went to the University of Minnesota and did well there. And so I worked my butt off to get my neck strong, to get my arm back strong and that whole deal. And my family here in Holland, Ohio and in Toledo, everybody here was just cheering for me and saying, Rick, you know, we're wet behind you and we're, you can get this done. And so having the family back here and then my friends and my coaches backing me up and I told I worked my butt off to, uh, to get back to where I was at. Um, the, the spring game and that whole deal, I had five touchdowns and over 300 yards and they were like, okay, <laughs> he, he can play a little bit. So uh, yeah, it was a great experience. I loved it up there and uh, had a chance to play with Tony Dungy. Uh, he came in as a freshman and that whole deal and guided us as well. So uh, it, was a, it was a great time for me. Loved the city, loved the people. Uh, great offense for me because we ran the Veer up there, so it kept me outside where I wasn't going inside as much and getting banged up. Upchurch's final season with the Broncos featured a rookie quarterback, John Elway, and much like Tony Dungy a decade before, it didn't take Upchurch long to figure out his new quarterback was something special. John the same way. Raw, you know, but again, you've got to realize when you step into the professional ranks, it's a totally different game. Everybody's good. Everybody's fast, everybody's quick. And I remember John coming back to the huddle saying, man, these guys are fast. And so, man, you know, he threw, he played baseball and he got drafted by the Yankees. And so if he couldn't read it quickly in that ordeal, oh, he would throw the ball at 12 yards and he was breaking fingers and everything else. We're like, John, we're at 12. Whereas Craig Morton, who was our, our quarterback, he had touch and knew how to, you know, get the ball in there and you touch and you could catch the ball. But John was raw, but we knew that John Elway was going to be a Hall of Fame uh, football player in that whole deal, and he turned into a Hall of Fame football player with two Super Bowl rings uh, under his collar. Another neck injury forced Upchurch into retirement before he could return to Ohio and play for the Browns. He caught 24 touchdown passes in his career, rushed for three more, but perhaps made his biggest impact in the return game twice leading the league in punt return average, scoring eight more TDs on punt returns and was the all-time leader in punt return yards at the time of his retirement. And I loved it. Did it in high school, did it in college, and it was just like um, real easy for me. But I remember my first game, my initial game that I played in, my debut, I had three catches for 153 yards and had a 90-yard touchdown catch. So uh, they probably felt Let's, let me put, them, put him where we need him most right now. And that was re, the return game in that whole deal. And I, you know, I became the AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. And my very first game, I had 284 yards and two touchdowns. We came back and beat Kansas City. So, you know, I found out real quick that I could play in the National Football League and do some damage. Needless to say, the former All-Pro does not want to see the return game legislated out of football injuries and they'll say sure you're going to get ding you're going to get ding whether you're playing wide receiver or linebacker or anything else that's part of the game but how exciting is it for someone to go back and get a punt or a kickoff and take it all the way back and just think about how quickly it flips the game it's a momentum changer 
So for them to get away from special teams has been around since the, the conception of football, I think it's pretty stupid, man. It, it's exciting. It's part of the game and it's field position and it dictates whether you win or lose.